Welcome. My name is Bruce Christie. I'm part of the investment management team at S&P Capital IQ. I'm joined today by Katerina Lipitova, one of the authors of a recently published article entitled Estimates and CDS Alpha Signals. Katerina, thank you very much for joining me. I guess my first question for you today is why did you decide to look at estimates and CDS signals to generate alpha? Hi Bruce, uh, it's great to be here. That's an excellent question. We've been actually seeing trends in our client base looking at cross asset class signals when investing in equities, especially credit signals combined with other equity related signals. So this is something our clients are starting to look at. Um, Therefore, we've decided to take a look at relationship between European equity returns uh, combined with a particular signal, which in our case is a CDS spreads um, and uh, long-term growth estimates. Okay, could you maybe elaborate slightly on the signals you just mentioned? Uh, we're looking at companies that are exposed to tight CDS spreads and high uh, long-term growth estimates. So the idea behind this custom strategy is that estimates can provide a view of the long-term growth outlook for particular companies, while CDS spreads can provide a view of short-term market sentiment towards that company. So in essence, this allows us to pick growth stocks with high credit worthiness. So how did you actually go about researching this idea? For example, uh, what methodologies did you use and how did you maybe rank and score the companies? Uh, well, to start off, we're looking at companies within S&P Europe 350. Uh, the sum of two signals is calculated for each stock, ranked and bucketed into five quantiles. Uh, so the companies with the tightest CDS spreads and uh, highest estimates, they get the highest model score and placed into quantile one. Quantile one is something we're going to be focusing on in our study. Interesting. So you've told us a little bit about some of the research and analysis that went into the article. Why don't you tell us a little bit more about some of the findings? We've backtested our signal, which proved to be statistically significant, and uh, Quantile 1 showed to be the most consistent over this uh, nine-year uh, history. Um, this led us to perform long-only strategy simulation investing in Quantile 1. This strategy performed uh, very well and showed a cumulative performance of about 88% um, over the last nine years. Uh, compared to benchmarks 21%. And to, uh, to add to this definite benchmark of performance, uh, the risk profile of the strategy was very similar to the benchmarks. Do you think the strategy would work if there was, say, a change in the macroeconomic environment? Uh, for example, if we return to a more stressed environment? So if we review the performance of this strategy in the global financial crisis, uh, we can say that it didn't perform relatively well uh, to its own history. However, on the active basis, it performed well compared to the benchmark, and it outperformed in the recovery period as well. Uh, furthermore, if we um, explore the option of being able to short sell and short quantile 5 in addition to being long quantile 1, uh, so that our cumulative performance is the spread between quantile 1 and 5, uh, we can say that the strategy works very well in the volatile environments. I see. Finally, do you think you could uh, summarize some of the key takeaways that you think investors would be most interested in hearing? Uh, to summarize, uh, we've observed a positive correlation between high model scores uh, within S&P Europe 350 and their uh, returns for the various horizons. We've also looked at uh, three-year and five-year periods. Uh, we've observed definite benchmark of performance and uh, greater reward for uh, a very similar risk profile. Um, and based on these findings, we can conclude that using combination of long-term growth estimates combined with CDS spreads can improve ab investors' ability uh, to identify alpha amongst European equities. Okay, I think this is a very interesting piece of uh, research. And I definitely think it will give investors something to think about when they consider the use of cross-asset class signals to generate their own alpha. So Katerina, thank you very much for your time. Thank you, Bruce. If you're interested in reading the article in full, you can find it in the link below. Or if you would like more information about S&P Capital IQ, please visit our website at www.spcapitaliq.com. Thank you very much.